grounding in scientific gerontology. Uh, we'll keep talking about that on throughout the course. So far, they were probably largely sort of separate areas. People sort of do services because uh, it's what we've always done or because um, it's what we want to do rather than it's what the clients need done um, and all kinds of other reasons. Um, my office is up here on the second floor. We're on the other side of the building, 217. One thing to be aware of if you come by my office is that it's actually two rooms, and I'm in the back room. So if you're coming in, if a door is unlocked, that probably means that I'm inside, and you should just come in and look for me inside. If you stand outside and knock on the door, there's about a 50-50 chance that I'm not going to hear you. I'm pretty, pretty well along into male, middle-aged, at least, uh, hearing loss. And the other thing you should know about that is if I've got my back turned to you, whether it's in the class or anywhere else in the world, there's about a 50-50 chance that I'm going to hear you and, and know that you're talking to me. So you know, if, I, if you say something to me, if I've got my back to you and you say something and I don't turn around again, don't take it personally. You, to, you need to get in front of me or hit me in the back or something. Uh, I check my email more frequently than I check my voicemail. Um, but I do check both. Probably the most effective way to get in touch with me is email. Um, I check it just about every day, Monday through Friday. I check it whether I'm in town or not. Um, sometimes I don't check it as often when I'm out of town. It depends on how busy they're keeping me at the meeting and how good the internet access is in the meeting. Sometimes I check it more frequently because I'm bored in the meeting. I'd rather be talking to you guys via email. So I told you a little bit about what we're doing today. Uh, the next about three sessions or so are different kinds of information processing uh, models. Uh, we'll be talking, they're primarily about kind of micro level processes, things like attention, speed of processing, memory, etc. Then um, around the end of September, we get up to life, what I'm calling the lifespan developmental psych part of the class. We'll talk about the ways that you look at studies and think about data to separate age and cohort uh, and time effects. And then the content uh, there is primarily about intelligence and uh, personality and whether and how they change, uh, both with developmental aging uh, and with generational cohorts. By the way, this it. one of the reasons I like the, the My Generation song, other than the fact that I just like it, is I think that the whole focus of my generation kind of captures that distinction between age and cohort and whether it's really how far along you are in the life cycle or what generation you're born into. It also kind of amuses me that the people seeing this are probably now only about a decade older than the who are, so the guys that originally did it. And there's a couple of you that probably remember when that was on the top 40 playlist, but like I do. Then after we get through the personality, intelligence, lifespan, developmental psych piece, we're going to be talking about uh, maturation models, particularly focusing on well-being and emotion. Um, I'll tell you at least briefly why life stage theories mostly haven't worked out. Then we'll have a couple of sessions on mental disorders in later life, delirium and dementia, depression, anxiety, and psychoses. We'll talk a bit about psychotherapy. We'll talk a bit about health psych. We'll finish up with stress and coping models and health. I do want to call your attention to this in advance. We get to about mid-November. We meet on Thursday. Uh, every year, um, well maybe, I guess when we meet on Monday, sometimes we actually don't miss anything because we don't miss two because of gerontological society. The Gerontological Society meeting is always the weekend before Thanksgiving. Personally, I think this is a terrible time to have a meeting, but it's been that way ever since I can remember and longer than that. 
Um, so we had no class that day because basically like all the faculty are gone, most of the students are gone, nobody's around. And then of course November 26th is Thanksgiving and I don't think any of us are coming in for that. Now this is okay, but it does mean that there's going to be about three weeks leading up to the last class session where there's no class contact. Now, I'm going to be around a lot of that time. I'm going to be reachable pretty much all of that time. So it's not like, you know, you're deserted and on your own. But you, know, you just want to kind of think ahead to whatever you want to know and also just kind of be aware that there's going to be a gap there. Okay, so for the meeting, the, the meat of our discussion, what we want to do. Um, first of all, I want to call your attention to the fact that um, there's this policy that late papers are not accepted and will not be graded. This obviously only applies if we have papers. We're probably going to have at least a couple. What this basically means is I think almost all problems that are going to make a paper late can be anticipated. So if you know that something is going to happen or you know your life is busy, you know you're moving, you know, something, you know you've got three papers due at the same time or something, get in touch with me in advance and get an extension in advance. Now if you actually do like, you know, fall downstairs and have a major concussion or something or you have a car, car wreck on the freeway on your way in, you know, you can report that. But you want to report it by either voicemail or or email both of which are time and date stamped uh, and let me know about this. Uh, this is partly because like a decade or so ago I got really annoyed with late papers and partly because I think at the graduate level we need to get you all thinking on more professional kind of mode and you know planning ahead and actually meeting deadlines and so forth. Some of, you, some of you are looking at me like what are you talking about and just take my word for it. USC undergrads don't always take deadlines seriously. So it's, a different world. Um, class participation means uh, if you're in the uh, if you're in the residential class, not residential, in-person class, I guess, uh, we need to be here and you need to talk when there's opportunities to talk. Uh, I'll let you know somewhere around uh, middle of the semester how that's going. For online students, it means uh, actively participating in Blackboard discussions. You all are also welcome to participate in the Blackboard board discussions. I think they, they usually, it depends a bit on the group, but usually tends to be really interesting and kind of fun and it gives you a chance to learn something about the other 30 or so people that are uh, part of this class, uh, some of which are scattered around the United States. We have in the past occasionally had, had people in other countries as well, but I think from what I've heard so far, I think the furthest away people are like in the Washington DC area this, this time around. Um, and there's a little guidance about what counts and what doesn't count. Okay, where I think we are so far. Um, we're going to have at least one of the small critical papers. This is because I'm not giving it up. Yes. So if you're in, you can do it if you're in class or blackboard, but it's not required. It's not required if you're here in the classroom participating. If you're, if you're really quiet in the classroom, it's a good way to, to make up being quiet in here. That wouldn't be by expectation, Maria, but you never know. <laughs> you might be overcome with shyness, you know. <laughs> um, We'll have one or two of these. I'm inclined to go for two because uh, people have trouble with the first one. It gives you a chance to, to show some learning curve and to benefit from feedback on these. These are brief. Um, they focus on a paper related to psychology and aging that is not covered uh, in the class. So it's everything that's on the syllabus doesn't count for this. Uh, what that, you should go to uh, either Psychology and Aging or the Journals of Gerontology, Psychological Sciences and pick a paper. It should be from the last two years. If there's a topic that you really, really want to do and you think you can